um, my boyfriend isn't Catholic, but I am, is a blog post that I created. Um, I had, my husband is a cradle Catholic. I was a Protestant. We were together for years. Uh, so I had no intention whatsoever of ever becoming Catholic. We got engaged under that understanding. We went through uh, premarital counseling with that understanding. So I basically go through why, just my honest thoughts on the matter, whether or not I think it can work or not. Um, it's a kind of a controversial topic because I know anyone asking that question has probably very personal relationships with someone that they love very much. And so to give an opinion on their relationship, who I don't know personally, is not a really good way to go about it. But I basically have said that, do I think they can? Yes, but I believe there's compromise um, because that's likely going to have to happen from your Protestant significant other. Um, so my husband and I, when we were getting, uh, when we were engaged and going to get married, you know, I had compromised. I was, in my mind, I had compromised. I was going to raise our kids Catholic, and I was okay with that. I always said, why wouldn't I want my kids to grow up to be like my husband? So I, I was okay with all of that compromise, but know that I think those conversations need to happen early. And also, you can't expect the other person to convert. So don't go into the relationship saying, well, I know one day he's going to be Catholic anyway, so this isn't really that big of a deal. I'll just keep praying about it. Because the truth is, no one can actually promise you that. Um, that's the, kind of the hard reality of it. And you could pray for the rest of your life, and it may not happen. So you have to prepare yourself. Are you prepared to also live a relatively maybe lonely Catholic life, going to Mass by yourself sometimes if maybe your Protestant significant other doesn't want to go to Mass? Will you still bring your kids by yourself? if they don't yeah. want to go to mass things like that that i basically there's so many factors it's not a definite yes or no but i think there's so many factors that need to be considered in it and i'm honest about my experience 110 percent um per, i'm always an open book and i was very open in this about our personal relationship my husband and i um obviously i don't know how our story would have played out had it not played out the way that we did but um that i am catholic now but we were prepared otherwise, and I think we could have made it work, but I do believe compromise happened. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. That's cool stuff. So, you know, it's funny, I actually work with a lot with couples, and and uh, it's funny how a lot of Catholic families will tell their kids, if you get married to a non-Catholic, you have to have that conversation early on. Yep. Like, because they, you have to ask as a priest, you're going to raise the kids Catholic, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's a requirement. I think they even have to sign a form that says that. You do. Yeah. We went through all of it. Yeah. Again, I had absolutely, I think I actually used the phrase, I will never be Catholic in, in the next thousand years. Never going to happen. Good luck, Andy. Like, you just know that ain't, ain't going to happen. And so I could, this is a whole other topic I could talk about is uh, my husband. I love him so much. That man is ready to be a saint. Um, and it is true because it's, I, I didn't convert because of him. But to say that there wasn't a role that he played is, un, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind. That man, he, talk about unconditional love. He, I battered that man with questions and accusations. You, Mary worshiper. I literally said one time in the car as we were driving, we were dating, I like yelled at him, well, if the Pope jumped off a bridge, would you jump off it too? Like. <laughs> Yeah, he put up with all of it and still asked me to marry him after that, by the way. That wasn't, we weren't even engaged yet. Um, and he will tell you to this day that I challenged him to answer questions that he didn't know the answer to. I think anyone who has friends or colleagues or in a relationship, you have probably with me on that. You're like, yes. And so he's got to learn a lot, but never once did he pressure me into the church. It was never an expectation. He loved me unconditionally which is somewhat incredible, but yet he never once compromised his beliefs. That man went to Mass every Sunday, and I was ticked off because he would go to Mass, but he wouldn't come to my church. But if he would come to my church, which he did some Sundays, he would still go to Mass afterwards. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's not fair. I went to Mass with you last Sunday. Why can't you miss Mass and come to my church with me? He wouldn't do it. Yeah. He was like, I'll go with you whenever you want, but I'm still going to go to Mass. 
So when you think about a man of that conviction, who had no expectations and loved me through it all, talk about being a witness without apologetics. So as much as I love apologetics, my husband is the complete opposite of me. And I love having him as a different perspective. I mean, we're opposites in like almost every way. Uh, first of all, he would never do a video, <laughs> <laughs> ever, ever. Uh, second of all, he's a cradle Catholic, different perspective there. And apologetics and theology aren't his thing. It's not his jam. He's not, he, he, ha he is so content in his faith that it's somewhat not needed, right? St. Thomas quote, for those who have no faith, no explanation. Um, it's, uh, it's possible for those who do have faith, no explanation is necessary. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can always correct us. So that's the beauty when you just- I can re say, say that. Say, you know, when you have community and it's like, if I got that wrong, just throw it in the comment section. I love, well, I love that quote by his because I think yeah. it's true and that's yeah. my husband for you. Yeah. So he is one of those people that it was never necessary for him. And I challenged him all the time. <laughs> and he didn't even have the answers all the time. Um, but I will say, this is where I say, uh, I actually heard this in a, it was a talk with a priest who I love this. He talked about most really good Catholics who grew up with the faith, you know, it's pretty steady throughout their lives. Like they never really left and they were just, they always were there with it. Not that they didn't have some struggles, but they have a, a source. They have a person. He was like, it's the person that they go to that they know is well-versed in church teaching and can answer any questions or doubts that they have. And so he talked about when he, he grew up Catholic and some Jehovah's Witness came to his house and they posed a lot of questions that he was like, well, I, I don't know the answer. Well, oh my gosh. And he think he was in college at the time, he said. So he actually, he knew who to go to because he was like, well, now I've, I've got some doubts because they're actually making some good points. So he called his dad. He, he was like, my dad was that person. He knew the books to give me. He knew the resources to give me. He knew what to say, and he had the answers. He says, I can't confidently tell you to this day, what if I didn't have that source that I knew would have the answer? I say this because my husband, um, my mother-in-law, his mom is that person. She's well-versed. She's a convert as well, actually. Yeah. It's funny how converts can be those for people sometimes. Absolutely. So um, I always 